My Uncle Ronnie was the greatest prankster of all time. It was a cherished, cherished childhood memory that every family gathering, if, if we were all there, it was guaranteed Thanksgiving, Christmas, no matter what, we'd all, we'd all get together and we'd hear this story. I was about 12 years old and what I remember was he said, well, I was out in the backyard, I was about 16 years old and uh, Dracula came into the backyard. and. And we were, we got into this huge, huge fight. This family has always cited this event as the seminal prank that anybody's pulled on anybody. And Dracula turned into a bat and started to fly away. And I jumped up in the air and I grabbed him and I took a stake and I put it in his heart. Dracula is the only monster that organically could have been buried in the ground and dug up and then come back to life. There were about 10 people there that night. Cousins, I had all kinds of cousins, and he's telling this story, and he says, well, if, okay, you know, if you want me to prove it, we'll go out in the backyard and we'll dig him up. This guy had such a brilliant idea, and he pulled it off so fantastically. And we get down, you know, probably three feet, and, and all of a sudden, boom, and it was in this metal box. It had this grin on its face, and I mean, it had the teeth, it had everything. It had a stake in its heart, and, <laughs> and I found out later that it was a stingray. It was a dried stingray. And my Uncle Ronnie bends down and he goes, I'm gonna pull the stake out, you know, and, and just, I wanna prove to you that this is really Dracula, you know, so I'm just gonna pull the stake out for a minute and I'll put it right back in. No, Ronnie, don't do it, don't do it, you know, and, and so he, no, no, it'll be okay. So he reaches down and he, and he, when he pulls the stake out, he takes a breath, I don't know how he did it, but he goes, I mean, it was like just perfect. You could hear the wind coming into Dracula's, like it was Dracula taking a breath of air. How my dad killed Dracula. Uncle Ronnie was a genius. And all you see are kids running with flashlights. Every family gathering, I would hear uh, Mark's version, Steve's version, Todd's version, Uncle Ronnie's version. We've been talking about this story all of Sky's life. <laughs> so, you know, when, when we told him the story, when he decided to make this into a movie, it was just like, oh, that's fantastic. Uncle Ronnie, he was like a rock, a fixture for my grandma, for my uncle, for me. Whenever you'd say, Goodbye. He, his thing was, I sure do love you, buddy. It just made me so happy when Sky brought, you know, made this movie about my Uncle Ronnie. I think he would have liked the stuff I added. I think he would have really, like, dug all the differences. I added things in the movie that make it somewhat a little darker than the actual tale. Setting it on Halloween night, casting of the young kid, um, the triple prank that's kind of that occurs in the film. But I think he would have been really honored and proud of it. I decided to shoot on film. I decided to make it uh, a quality project. My DP, Sky Borgman, I had met on another project that I had acted in. Uh, I loved working with her. He has to open up some of those branches on his face so we get more light. A friend of mine from school, uh, Ryan Ramos, a uh, great AD producer friend, came on board. Shovels! Hey guys, do me a favor. Don't dig at all right now, and don't play with the shovels, okay? Let's keep all of our attention with Sky. And then it was about who was going to play uh, Uncle Ronnie. Daniel Roebuck and I had worked together on a feature called Grave's End. I reached out to him because we had stayed in contact. Kid, you are a good actor, but I don't really have time to be in your movie. And he said, it's called How My Dad Killed Dracula. And I said, when do we start shooting? Daniel Roebuck had the insight of let's, let's keep it PG. Let's not take it to another level. Let's keep it really family fun. And I think he was absolutely right. This is one of the favorite things I've done. 
Full disclosure, I, I'm proud of this, this little gem of a movie. From the moment I approached him, he was on board, he loved the idea, and is the best Uncle Ronnie that we could have gotten. How my dad killed Dracula. He's the he's he's dad, and he killed Dracula, so watch out. That's how I kill, why am I talking like this still? Is it scary at all? Is it scary? It's a, a little disturbing. Yeah, yeah, how about I talk like this, yeah. How about Gary Marshall? How am I dead? Kill Dracula, it's a good movie, it's lots of fun. You'll enjoy it, come down and see it, yeah. Yeah, the kid who plays Steve, amazing. Yeah. Like, fantastic. Yeah, we've never seen a corpse act so well. <laughs> it's not really a corpse, because he's alive, he's right here. So that's why it was funny, he's not a corpse, he's well alive. <laughs> Daniel always, he always had like this wit about him and like this, I don't know, this comedic side that always made everybody, you know, have like this relaxed feeling during the whole filming process and, you know, he was just fun to be around. Hey, Dad! Yes, young fella. He was really, he was inspiring to me because I, I hadn't worked with any veteran actors before. Yeah, he's just a very brilliant person and, uh, you know, he's really into all that uh, makeup and special effects and stuff, so, you know, he's, I mean, you know, I wish I could be someone like him. Each of those kids was great, and I can tell you uh, that each and every one of them brought something so unique to it. Cooper, who was playing Steve, now Steve was, he was the actual kid who was at the actual event, you know, back in the 1971 or 72, so he's now a 50-year-old guy, and, and we had uh, Cooper played him, he was the pirate, Great, great kid, great attitude. Hey, people. Uh, what day is this? This is the third day that I've been here shooting How My Dad Killed Dracula. How did you bring it? It rocks. Woo! This is Victor. He rocks, too. Victor, what do you think about all this? Uh, it's cool. Yeah. It rocks. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. It is a lot of fun. Victor played the uh, football player. Filming how my dad killed Dracula. H and DKD, baby. This is, Woo! This is awesome. Oh yeah. I have an excuse to be a pirate. That's cool. This oh, is yeah. my buddy. He's, camera. He's, he's awesome. Top gun? Yeah, he's top gun. I need my shades. Yeah, his shades are cool. Where are your shades? Yeah. They're inside the uh, haunted house. Cameron played my son. He's the pilot, and. Uh, I thought he was very, you know, also a very solid actor, a good, uh, a good kid. And uh, Maxim was the youngest, as you can imagine, making a movie with children. Oftentimes, in the second part of the movie, when we're out in the backyard, I was mostly working with C stands and shovels and X's of tape on the ground because, you know, you can only work a kid for so long before the man comes and takes you to jail. So, uh, you know, they'd work the kids and <laughs> the kids would go and they'd be like, okay, Dan, it's your big emotional scene. It's him. Dracula? The real, the real push is Victor doesn't believe uncle, his uncle, and that's what motivates the rest of the action. Um, definitely my dad pushed my buttons on purpose. We're always, we're always going at it and trying to prove each other wrong. And let me tell you, when, I, when I'm able to prove him wrong, it's a pretty good feeling. So as far as relating, <laughs> relating that to the film, um, you know, I think, I think that definitely showed through my character and, you know, in that aspect. What a great actor they got. Like, he was just cocky enough. He's got that, like, he's so nonchalant. He's got his little Tootsie Pop and he's, uh, you know, he's very funny. Look how he's being all serious. Not anymore. That's good, Ron. We actually need you out front. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? They need me out front. I... They yeah. Need you. Which you that, know that out front is the, the opposite direction from what you pointed. That out front. That out front. That way. Yeah. So set Let's set, go, buddy. My I want to see the set. Okay. I haven't seen it yet, so follow me. I just poked my eye. Yeah. He's got he's got cool aviator shades. What do I have? Cooper and I get way back, dude. Yeah, all of like what? Two days ago. Three weeks. Yep. 
Oh yeah. Where do you fit into the picture? I have no idea. As them. You go way back too. Yeah. Around three weeks. All of you guys. Yeah. Woo! Combined. We know each other for a total of 37. Exactly. Yeah. Neil Hopkins, who plays Dracula in the movie, is my friend from grad school. We went to the American Conservatory Theater together. I didn't have him audition or anything like that. I just knew I needed someone that could look like the classic Dracula. Run! And you guys running away, and then um, Which one we're not getting you coming back yet, but all the way through to that. We're getting it, dude. We're getting it. So, yeah, you Max, know what? We're Did you? Oh, yeah. Sky was a really good director. I'm, I'm blown away by how ta talented Sky is. I was very impressed while we were making the movie with Sky's directing. I just remember Sky being a really cool guy. He was a really down-to-earth guy. Just his casualness and like the way he went about things made it a lot easier to... He was open for new ideas into the script, which was really nice. He did things that were very uh, cool to, to get the reaction he wanted from us. Camera goes on action, guys. Dump goes on dump. And action. Dump! Oh. Find that five dollar bill, get your hands in there. And a little slower, pick and choose, get your hands in there. Go up toward the rack, go up toward the bowl. I remember eating the candy. I remember sitting there at the table with, you know, Max and Cameron and Cooper, and we're all sitting there chowing and... I remember a lot of candy on the set, <laughs> because it was obviously Halloween time. So, being 13, I was completely excited about that. Now. I was a 45-year-old man, so of course I ate the candy. I mean, I'm not nutty. Somebody yelled at us, I don't remember who it was, but somebody was telling us to stop eating all that candy. Do you have any uh, stories to tell about what's happened so far? Um, we don't want to give the movie away. Exactly. This guy thinks ahead. Well, this is going to be watched after the movie. Oh. So you can say something right now. No. Loophole, huh? <laughs> okay. Um, Monster was amazing. The, uh, the little Dracula thing, it was like, it's made of like a foam thing. It feels really cool. And getting it in there without getting the dirt on, that was hard. Is it scary though? No. Uh, not when you know it. I didn't know what to expect, so I thought it'd be a little smaller, but then when they made it bigger and orange, that was cool. What are you doing to it right now? I'm just rigging the coffin so I can puppeteer its eyes opening. What do you think about that? It's gnarly. <laughs> I have a childhood friend, Richard Sinatra, who grew up uh, editing and making short films of his own. Roosevelt Middle School days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> long time ago. Long time ago. Now, like, it first started off with uh, Larry Parker got me, or Sinatra and Soleil got me 2.1 Sinatra million. and Soleil. And here we are, many moons later. I approached yeah. him to edit the film. And he really inspired not only the, the pace of the film and the editing, which he did so wonderfully, but he also, he put in temp tracks and he had, he had a really strong sense of the music and the eeriness and the sounds um, that would work really well with it. So when I approached uh, Nathan Lanier, our um, composer, Richie had already laid in all this wonderful temp stuff and not just temp music, but soundscapes and things that would really help lend to, to really pushing in some certain moments and um, Nathan came in and he was incredible we had a final cut of the film um, huge fan of it just loved it from the get-go and just really embraced the vision we were going for if one day I were to have kids uh, I think pulling a harmless prank like that would be pretty funny yeah maybe when I grow up I might do this to my kids that might be kind of funny. They found this thing and they buried it a year ahead of time. And I, I defy any one of you, any one of you, pull this prank on somebody. Don't show them the movie. Get a shovel, get a dead stingray, put a thing in its, you know, make sure it's a dead stingray. I please don't, I don't want the Jacques Cousteau Society coming at me and saying that they're killing stingrays because I told them to on TV. Get a dead stingray and then, and then <laughs> bury it in your yard and see if you're man enough to wait one year, one year. It's just unbelievable. <laughs> he was insane. I mean, to, to, to have come up with that. How could anybody come up with that? Nobody. Uh, my Uncle Ryan, unbelievable. <laughs> Ha ha ha!
It is a family film about Halloween. It's, it's what we've been all waiting for, for our entire lives. Because so much Halloween fair is gore fest or all this, you know, things that you know, they don't want to introduce their kids to at a young age. But with this film, they're able to sit around, all ages can watch it and have a good time.